Hello, everyone. Hey, Oz. Hi. Uh, sorry, I'm a little disorganized here. I'm trying to sort myself out here. Okay. <clears throat> right, so uh let's see. Um in what will will now be a new feature of these, I'll just do a quick rundown of what we have in the current viewer release pipeline. Um we still have and actually <laughs> this needs updating since since last night, and I, I didn't do it, um, we promoted the maintenance branch viewer, viewer what was the viewer bear repository to viewer release last night, and the rest of these um, are all therefore going to have to merge that and reissue their release candidates. Um, so there have been no new ones since we met last week. Um, there are about to be a couple of new ones, so at least a couple. So uh, we'll and we'll we'll hit on that, um, but I, I don't think there are any special issues that have arisen with any of any of the current candidates, unless you guys know about some that I don't. Okay, so hearing no hearing no issues, we can move right on to uh, our bigger agenda items for the day. So, um, inventory service version three um, is uh, rolling out. Uh, so, um, we have some folks here to be able to talk about that. Um, Brooke is here. And Don is here. And so uh, why don't you take it away, Brooke? Okay. Thanks, Oz. Hi, everyone. Uh, so Don's actually going to do most of the talking, but we are getting close to putting the updates for the inventory API v3, as we're calling it, onto Aditi. And Included in these changes are some things that work with the Sunshine Viewer, which I understand some of you have already started working with. So, um, so Don is hopefully no longer lagging and uh, ready to explain to you what some of the new functionality is and uh, give you an idea what uh, what you might want to try out. Don, you ready? All right, is that working? There you go. Yeah. Now All right, great. All right, cool. So let's see. Um, where do we start? That's a general uh, overview of what the API provides uh, there. Um, Apologies for any uh, uh, confusion there. I just I just wrote this last night to convert uh, the spec over to that wiki doc. Also, here's the raw um, spec doc itself. Um, we're using that internally. Um, well, one to generate this document and also for voice testing as well, or, or uh, unit testing. Um, the main reason for um, this uh, new update is uh, a lot of the messages that we we currently have. Uh, for manipulating inventory or based on UDP, um, and they are not really reliable. Uh, there may be an error that occurs in the back end somewhere, um, and the viewer doesn't really get an update that there was an issue there. Um, also, there's some issues around um, single-threaded uh, pipeline on some MySQL queries, uh, the, the way that those are currently routed. Uh, this should help with um, being able to have support multiple inventory operations at once um, using different backends. 
Um, and also just giving more control to the viewer about what it wants to do with the inventory. Um, these uh, resources and methods uh, will eventually, you, you see there that a lot of them are not quite yet implemented, uh, but the ones that are implemented already give um, a lot more flexibility in um, what you're able to do with your inventory, um, how you're able to manipulate it uh, without having to go through the simulator itself. Uh, the simulator doesn't actually process, process these anymore. Um, you can actually just talk directly to the um, uh, inventory services themselves using a capability. You'll actually get two capabilities back from the, um, the server. One is for your own inventory um, and one is for the library. Both of those follow the same API here. Although some methods and operations are not available on uh, on one or the other, for example, you can only copy from the library uh, into your inventory. You can't do the other direction, obviously. Um, for example, also deletes can only be done in your own inventory. You know things like that. Um, so that's that's kind of the high level um, where we're currently at. Um, I think sometime next week we're going to try deploying this to a DD, uh, see how things go. Um, we're still in testing at this point on another dev grid right now, just to shake things loose. See if anything else comes out. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some questions. Um, hopefully, the documentation covers at least the the details uh, of everything, though um, it's kind of lacking in the high level, um, you know, where you know reason uh, for for the changes, things like that, just because this is based directly off the uh, REST doc. So with that. Um, any uh, any immediate question? Yeah, that's right. The V2 API is still in place. Um, this is uh, just available on top of it. Notifications. So there will be notifications in place for, for example, when Marketplace uses this, it, there will be notifications that uh, the inventory service will push on over to the viewer. Um, but in general, the, inf the uh, notifications you're going to get are going to be in the responses for the HTTP requests themselves. Um, just because any operation you're going to be performing, um, you're going to be doing through an HTTP connection and you'll get a response back directly. Um, you won't be manipulating, um, at least not yet, um, other people's inventory. Now. When we do get to the point we, where we allow copy operations between agents, um, that might still go through the servers, um, but there will be notifications that would be in place for that, of course, for the um, recipient to be able to get um, the update. But that's not that's not currently needed with this uh, implementation. For Notifications on current operations, those do not change. So you're still going to get the same UDP packets coming up um, in informing you of any changes to your inventory. So yeah, once we get this on Aditi, that's one thing that um, you'll want to do is um, take the opportunity to have your, you know, your testers make sure that your viewer works against v2 and we didn't inadvertently impact the behavior there um you know we were we're not touching it but um we're focusing a lot of our testing on regression testing to make sure that there aren't any um side effects One thing that Stop mentioned in these docs, and I'm not sure if I'm going to have a place to put it, um, it actually understands um, both LLSD, which I believe the viewer is kind of hard-coded to use mostly at this point, but uh, you also have the option of using um, application JSON content type uh, if you prefer using JSON. Um, but uh, both should be tested in the unit test, so they both should be uh, available, uh, but by default we're using um, application LLSD plus XML. Yeah, you can you can use JSON if you like. No, not binary. Um, 
I think I think there's going to be more load on the actual MySQL code uh, being done in the back end to obviate the need for you know trying to optimize down to binary. Um, so that's that's not really in the works right now. Just stay with XML. It might be another content type I can add if it's uh, really something you guys want to put in there. Um, I don't see a reason not to use LSD binary. I've found the XML to be easier to read um, when doing testing with curl commands, um, but I don't see any reason to not allow LSD binary. It's the thing I can look into. Yeah, I believe it actually supports uh, gzip compression. Um, so you can just uh, you know put a, a accept encoding in there uh, for gzip. Also, the simulators do provide caching mechanisms. Um, so if you are re-requesting the same folder, for example, um, and the version of has not changed, you should be getting back the same uh, response from the uh, squid server on the simulators themselves. Uh, so that should speed certain things up. Also for library, um, a lot of that uh, is highly cacheable. So most of the library requests are actually going to be coming back from squid directly. Uh, but you can uh, send up e-tag headers um, to get back a 304 response if, they, if things have not changed uh, to optimize your um, your requests. Yeah, that's right. So any other questions? So this should be this going up on Aditi when? Do we know? Um, not sure if Kurt's here or maybe Brooke knows. Um, I just do sometime next week, um, but we're waiting for a green light from from QA. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're 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 we won't know until um, until probably early next week. So we'll reach out to you, Oz, and let you know, and um, you can pass on the information. Right. I will do that by the usual means um let's see read the question um i would hope so for the, for the general case um in, in terms of uh, response time being improved. Right now there's a bottleneck. Um, um, we have a data server that is uh, handling requests for I think multiple simulators is the mapping currently. Um, so if you have a very busy simulator um, and a lot of people are, um, for example, changing outfits or manipulating inventory or requesting inventory, uh, they all have to go through the single threaded um, data server for that uh, uh, response. Um, that's not going to be the case using uh, V3. You should be able to get those responses back a bit quicker. I, I, yeah, well, we can lead into that at some point. It was sometime in the future I'm thinking of actually adding to this API, but uh, I suppose that that's a discussion we can have at a later time. Things like gestures, for example, I think fit pretty well in here. Um, gesture manipulation for activation, deactivation could probably be another sub-resource on this.
Well, very cool. Um, thank you very much. And if anybody has questions or issues, um, you know how to reach me, and I will be posting details of when these are live and you can start doing regression testing against them. And we'll have usage examples when Sunshine External is next updated. So uh, coming soon. Or you can use curl once you get a cap. <laughs> <laughs> Fun with curl. Um, uh, next up is the long-awaited Baker on group bands. Hello. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to come here today to announce that I'm starting in, going to be starting internal testing uh, shortly, either uh, probably Monday, um, put it in the hands of some QA and on an internal dev grid, which is getting the code right now. Um, so it's been a, been a really, really long ride. I've learned a lot. Don helped me out a ton. Everybody give him some, some big ups. And, uh, but yeah, so I'm working on the documentation and stuff today as well for being able to ban people permanently from a group rather than just kicking them and letting them come back. So, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, there's currently some, some limitations, sort of, I guess. We're, I'm keeping it capped at 500, uh, bans per group, just like, uh, we do with parcel bands and other things just to stay uh, consistent. What will happen is you will get a cap. The viewer will receive a cap from the, uh, from the simulator, uh, which then you populate with some, some data and send it off to our uh, web service, which will handle adding and removing bands. So uh, I guess since everybody kind of knows already what it's about, um, I'll just welcome questions, or I, I didn't really do a good job of explaining it, I'm sorry, but, um, so I'm, I'm just going to take questions and hopefully everybody will have their questions answered. Okay, um, I'll, I'll start with the questions quite happily. <laughs> um, um, th this is going to be nice and simple, it's just going to be a permaban, there's no... Um, time, time span or anything like that. Yeah, um, yeah, that's correct. So it's it's going to be on. It's if you go into the people floater and then you go into your group under the roles section, you see the members, roles, and abilities tab. There's going to be another tab that just says banned agents, and then it'll have the list of their SLID and the day that they were banned. I've also included a reason field in the database, but I haven't yet implemented that. It may just come later. So the first few band, the first group of bands you guys might, you know, y'all might, might add to your, your list, um, won't have a reason. I don't want to open up the reason to just sentences. I'd rather have them open to maybe a list of five or so tags that you can then select from, which would also allow you to help sort your ban list. So if you wanted to say, okay, well, let's get rid of people that were just, you know, being jerks in chat, you could sort by that, and then you could remove those people if if you wanted to. Um, I've this you can also, I've, but I have uh, allowed preemptive banning. So what that means is instead of ban waiting for somebody to join your group and then ban them, you can just add a, a person, a, a resident, to the ban list right away. So that way you can um, sort of, I don't know, to me, it, my analogy is sort of like, you know, locks on the door to prevent people from getting in rather than keeping people, you know, rather than kicking them out and preventing them from coming back. So I wanted you guys to be able to block people that you knew were going to hassle you, especially if there was other people from other groups. Uh, it's going to use the same floater as the uh, invite when you're trying to invite people. So it's going to, you can you, uh, do bulk uh, banning as well. The, 
Uh, it will show what day they were banned, like I said, and their name, and that was that's about it. Um, but I temporal bans just seem like an it for what I'd have to do to keep the time based bans uh, synced with you know okay well it's two weeks from today or whatever it just seemed like a lot of work for a feature that should that could be managed sort of you know by hand we could always put it in as a ban uh, I could always add the ban reason too and you could like have an, an other or something like that and then if you want to manage it however you want you can yeah, there is a reason field. There will be a reason field. Um, it may not be in the very first release. It, it may come a little bit later, but it's going to be in the database. I just haven't figured out how I want to um, have that information in there. Uh, oh, cool. Bulk banning by wildcard. So you can... <sighs> yeah. So you would use multi-select from the legacy search. Um, no. Yeah. It's, I, I actually, so, I definitely wanted to come in and, and say that while I'm come here to say that, uh, the, the merge might be kind of a pain because I refactored the invite, uh, LL panel group invite, which is that little group invitation floater. I refactored that heavily to, because I needed one for bands, so I needed to use the same thing and I really felt horrible duplicating all that code so I just made a base class and then derived those two things so um, I don't know how parcel bands work with alts so I'm not sure but I'm gonna say probably not because since I don't know how they work uh, it bans the per what it does is it checks it, before you try to invite somebody or before they try to join the group it will check to see if they're on the ban list, and if they are, then they get ejected. So it's only that UUID. It's only the the SL uh, or the the UUID of the of the resident. For the record, I'm with Latif. Yeah, don't bother making it uh, real fancy with time based bans. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't simple want to. works. Well, I'm glad to see that everybody wants wants it simple because that makes me feel better. Especially since that's what we have. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Um, that anything, the first thing that I would do to improve the group bands is uh, improve the 500 band limit, um, 500 uh, member band limit. Uh, that would be the first thing I would look into, seeing how well that would perform. Is the and band list actually limited? Uh, I mean, the visibility limited only to, for instance, moderators or something. Um, it can be. I don't. I haven't put it in there because for me, it's sort of like being able to see the group list in general. Um, I can't imagine. I I can see the basic I can see situations where people may not want their group owners may not want to uh, allow viewing seeing if the list can be viewed or not but I kind of felt that you know if a that group members should be able to see the list just like they can see the the list of uh, people also uh, I do want to say uh, Sure, you can you can just delete them. You can just select them in the ban list and hit remove, and that will remove them from the ban list, and then they can get reinvited or they can join again. And let's see. Um, oh yeah. Also, who gets the ban? Who gets the the ability to ban? Um, so that's been something that I've been thinking about a lot throughout the course of this. Uh, who? what role should be able to get it by default. And I was tempted at first to give it to anybody that had both the uh, eject members from this group 
and the uh, allow assign and remove abilities and roles or whatever that is the the way that you could actually eject somebody I was gonna give it to them in the, the but I've I figured that that might not be the best course of action so right now as it's as it stands only owners will get the ability to ban people by default there is a role that you'll there is a new role that you'll be able to select inside the roles tab and you can and you can now and then you'll be able to uh, grant that uh, ability or that role to uh, or that ability to whatever role you want but only but owners at first will be the only ones that will be able to do it Uh, let's see. Don, it, yeah, it is a new group uh, permission. It's it's just another flag. But I was going to tie it into an existing one, but it seemed like there's a lot of potential for, for problems there. Uh, another question. Um, can I ban people from my groups who ban me from their groups automatically? Um, Sure, but you'll have to do it by hand. I mean, there's so there's no way. So I guess there's no automatic part of it. So you can't. I suppose if yeah, <laughs> yeah, retali retaliatory group banning. That'd be a fun little button to have. <laughs> um, yeah, when the code gets deployed on a DD. Option. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, there is, I will also plan, it's, this is not uh, anywhere close to release, I haven't even really thought about it much, and I, I haven't done anything in the scripting engine, so I'd have to talk to, to Kelly Linden about that for a while. But I have been thinking about allowing, uh, adding some LSL uh, functions to allow you to have, a, you know, to allow you to, to do group banning and stuff as well. That's on the table, but it's not going to be this release it'll be in a future release if it's deemed necessary um the only so if you're trying to join a group that you're uh, so the question is do you envision notification to the user at the time of that user's banning uh i haven't really thought about that um I can see that if somebody gets banned, it might be nice to have a little pop-up saying you have been banned from this group and that's it. And then if you try to join it, and it would say you can't join this because you've been banned. Or if you or if a group member with invite permissions tries to invite a resident who is on the ban list, it will have it has a pop-up right now that says you can't invite them because they're banned. I like that. Um, so I don't know how what what your thoughts are, or what you should. Uh, I'd like to actually ask you guys because you you'll want to use it and and probably know what the notifications would would be better. But I mean, just getting kicked from a group. Yeah. I agree, Worley. It would it would definitely save a lot of why can't I join this group? So if you're trying, I, I think that what I should the best course is to say if you're trying to join a group that you're banned uh, that you're banned from, it it will say you can't join this because you're banned. And then if you get kicked, it could just send a notification saying you've been, or if you get banned, it'll send a notification saying hey you've been banned. Or if you try to invite, it'll say you can't invite that guy because they're on the ban list. Yeah, I wanted to make it right now saying you've been banned because you suck, but I decided to not do that. It's kind of, it's much more polite. Yeah, personally, I, I really don't care whether they get a notification at all. I just really want the ability. Um, and on that note, when, when you're ready for um, some help with testing, um, please let me know. I'm 
quite sure I can find you a bunch of people that are willing to uh, test. Excellent. Um, I have, there's a group yesterday at the server beta user group. I had a, I have a test um, group on a DD right now, so I invited a bunch of people from the user group to that, and then this way we can just have fun banning each other and unbanning each other um, during a user group. But uh, So, also, here's, here's kind of what happens under the hood, and this is all in the viewer code, so I don't have a problem talking about it. Uh, when you get banned, what it does is it will send a request to the server. Um, placing the agent on a ban list, and then it just essentially calls the eject function as well. So whatever happens when you eject somebody will happen. It just then adds them to a list that, that it adds that UUID, the residence UUID to a list that then will prevent them from coming back. Uh, bulk unban, yes. You can bulk unban. You'll be able to the list will look exactly like the list, uh, the group list right now. So you can just highlight as many as you want, hit remove, and it'll just remove them all from the list. Is the server side of this uh, going to the same Q&A, or is it deployed already somewhere? Uh, it's not deployed yet. Well, it's deployed on an internal dev grid. Uh, I'm expecting next week to have it deployed on a, uh, on a DD uh, for, some, for some public testing, and then after that, Hopefully it won't. Hopefully everything will go smoothly, and I'll be able to have it on Agni very soon. No, Robo. I decided to, because, I mean, what we're essentially doing is permanently ejecting them from a group, I decided to just say, hey, eject that, like, ban, add this person to the ban list and then kick them from the group. Like, that's kind of, that was kind of what I, I did just because I didn't want to duplicate the same functionality in eject because I looked at it and I was like, I have to do all of this anyway, so I might as well just call the function to handle the eject. Is that function handled viewer side or... Um... Is it handled service? Um, well, th the calling of the eject will be handled uh, viewer side. It's it's nothing more than in when you're creating the ban at the very end of the function, it just says handle eject or whatever it was, the function that would call when you actually click the eject button. I just make it also hit that. So the eject still happens server side. It's just the viewer code, I was, I was lazy about it, and I just made it eject rather than do all the code well, I mean, I wasn't really lazy, but I didn't want to duplicate all of the code to eject somebody when I was going to be doing that anyways. It's just I'm the only difference is the ban adds them to a list. All right, cool. So if there is a bug that, and I'm not sure if this is still there, but if there is the bug that um, removes that they can stay in chat for their session, that hasn't been fixed yet with eject, so it's not technically going to get fixed with bans either. Um, but at but, least uh, you'd be able to mute people's vo um, actual text chat as a moderator, so it's still a solution for many people. Right, and then as soon as they leave that session and come back, they're not going to be able to do it again. So, you know, that might be that. That's the the solution that I came up with. Uh, there was I just thought of something that I now forgot. Oh, yeah. So while I was digging around inside our uh, server, inside the server code for um, the the system that hand the web service that handles this, uh, I'm also, I also managed to fix a couple bugs like where you have somebody on your blocked list and you try to remove them and it, when you log back in, it keeps them on your list. Uh, I fixed that as well. So when you remove somebody they act, from your block list, they'll actually get their block list. You know, they'll, actu they'll actually get uh, removed, and it'll and they won't be blocked anymore from you. Uh, also, uh, I've prevented display names from allowing leading spaces. So you can't have, like, five spaces and then your display name. 
which I mean, I don't, re I didn't really see, I, I don't see the point in it because if you're using spaces to game the system and searching or whatever, then all you're going to do is just use the underscore or the dot or whatever, but um, to, to game the system now, but at least you'll be able to see how many spaces or whatever there are. You can also not, it, I also prevented it from using Unicode spaces as well and all the different flavors of Unicode spaces. So um, hopefully that'll help, help some situations. Well, you can use spaces, you just can't use them in the beginning. So, for example, you can I can have my display name right now as... I can have my display... Well, it, that actually stripped my spaces, but... Um, exactly. So, you can't have a bunch of leading spaces and then, and then a, a text, but you can have spaces within it. It just strips the white space from the beginning and the end. Uh, yes, you don't need to use LL string util trim. You, I mean, you still can. It just it won't do anything. It shouldn't do anything. How about that? I'm I'm not gonna say it won't, but it shouldn't. Uh, does anyone else have any other questions about group ban? The only question I have, you can't answer. <laughs> and that would be when, right? Exactly. Yeah, when it's when it's ready. Well, It'll the, be soon. Yeah, the answer will be the same for everything uh, as soon as we can, and we'll tell you. Um, but uh, there you go. Well, thank you for your appearance. Or psych Thanks, to hear that that's coming. Yes, thanks for having me. Okay. Um, interest list. Uh, we actually were scheduled to have somebody come and talk about that today, and it really is expected to come out during next week. But unfortunately, Richard was um, tied up with something else and unable to uh, join us for this meeting to talk about it. So we will be having yet another in between third party viewer dev meeting same time same place next week so we will have had three in a row and since i'm not going to change the repeating schedule we'll end up with another one the week after um, but we will have richard here to talk about yeah we will have richard here to talk about interest list and in fact by then i think the interest list viewer will be out um, so uh, but there will be some things for you to think about in terms of uh, w it, the intention is that it's entirely backwards compatible but uh, it, there may be some observable effects um, in particular it will probably be useful to have a couple of your um, make make sure that there are some people here from the support side of things who can who can hear about what those effects might be and and what to watch for um, Yeah, so um, so that's that's coming. Uh, and like I said on the agenda page, um, I don't actually have any updates on any of the uh, the remaining things that are on our current topics list: animation interfaces, um, uh, new ALM stats, uh, or an official Linden Lab stance on liquid mesh. Um, but don't lose hope. There might be some someday. So uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll keep them on the list. But uh, that pretty that exhausts the agenda. Since I don't think, unless somebody did it during the meeting, nobody has added a new topic item. But the floor is open for random stuff.
Uh, well, I mean, there will be, let's see. Uh, the upcoming things, there will be another round of stuff coming soon from the maintenance team, I'm sure, because they always have a backlog of stuff coming. Um, we've already talked about we'll have the the uh, a new Sunshine Viewer at some point, maybe not right away, but it's in the pipeline. We do expect the interest list uh, project viewer to be out um, as a release candidate probably next week. We expect it next week for real this time. Um, and there's Monty's HD. Yeah, with it, really, really. That's what they're telling me, really, really. Um, so uh, um, on the agenda, there was a bit mentioned about uh, Mac 10.6. And well, I don't recall that actually being mentioned so far. Oh yeah, uh, there is a there is a cohort for that, uh, and we went through a couple of different variations. Um, what that is is that there were there were some bugs that were affecting at least some users that were still on Mac 10.6. Um, and let me bring up the page so that I can actually give you the right numbers. Uh, so channels. Right, so it is um, 3.6.5, which was the Coco viewer, introduced some problems that we didn't discover until after we, it, well, we didn't discover how wide, widespread and serious they were until after we'd released it. Um, it it only seems to have affected some people on 10.6. Uh, on OS X 10.6. So what we did was we can, we created a special cohort for those people um, to keep them from getting updated further. And in fact, for a while we were doing mandatory upgrades back to 10.6 if you were already past, to, sorry, 2.3.6.4 if you were already past that. We've since changed that so that it's, it's an optional downgrade. Um, uh, what what were that, the books in question? Uh, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't remember. Um, but they were. Uh, the, the only reason why I ask is because uh, we did have a weird situation where a bunch of Mac users were um, complaining that they couldn't get command click to work, which is right clicking. And when we tested it on, you know, Macs, we had other people testing it on their Macs, they, they couldn't reproduce it. And so we couldn't quite figure out anything unique other than the fact that they were using 10.6.8, which. Also, the testers were using 10.6.8. Yeah, I, uh, like I said, I, I don't actually remember. I know that a bunch of the bu those bugs have been fixed in the current, in the, in the maintenance branch that just went out, but I think not quite all of them. Um, so uh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to plead ignorance here. Um, we do, we do still have the co it'll, the cohort will still show on the on the download and and um, and, and viewer source repositories page uh, just because uh, it's it's live in the version manager um, but uh, it it shouldn't affect anybody that's not running a Mac um, that's less than or equal to version 10.6 OS X 10.6. And eventually, we'll when we when we think we've got all those bugs fixed, we'll close that cohort, and those people will get upgraded to whatever the current default is. Um, I I will I will say uh, you know if you get the opportunity to advise anybody on this, uh, the viewer actually crashes a lot less on both 10.7 and 10.8 than it does on 10.6. So and uh, um, one thing to add to that is. If you buy it from the uh, App Store, it's fifteen dollars. That's you know really their little money. 
Uh, also, I've also discovered that a lot of Mac users uh, weren't aware that they could actually upgrade their operating system, which seemed kind of strange. Yeah, and it's a, well, for me at least, uh, I mean, I did the upgrade from 10.6 to 10.7, and I did the upgrade from 10.7 to 10.8, and it was literally just, you know, push the button and then sit around for five minutes, I mean, or ten minutes. It was it was, it was was really quick, and it was completely painless. It just did the right thing. Um, so, I, I mean, I suppose there might be circumstances and, and systems for which that's not true, but it certainly was true for me. Um Actually, but uh, the the, the percentage of people on ten six has has dropped quite a bit, but we'll see. I don't know what the current number is. I was going to say um, I deliberately run ten six just for the reason I said. I actually like a machine that's at the the back end of the performance curve, but I actually found two problems. Um, one is that I actually could not get ten seven from the, the Apple Store. Um, in the last, I spent some time digging, and the last time I tried to do this, I actually could not get it out of Apple now that uh, 10.8 and beyond is available. And um, the other thing is that Apple actually sloughed, Apple, sloughed off a lot of hardware with 10.7, and uh, quite a few viable machines can't go forward, really. Just a personal complaint. I'm not <laughs> speaking for Lyndon. I just wish we could roll everything forward a little better than we, are, we can. Yeah, um, Apple has a fairly aggressive drop the old stuff tendency. Yeah, recently especially. Oh, thank you, Wordy. Yeah, there you go. I wish I had a portable Wordy. Tutti collaboratori. Dice tutto l'Inden, sono Amareo. Ma io non so, 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 non Okay, other topics before we're finished? No, you actually um, got rid of my words, Baker. But what was the brake pad? <laughs> yeah, I heard that was a popular question. Yeah, uh, I was just brake, asking what the the viewer brake pad uh branch is still going. I I contributed some additional changes to it. This week, uh, there should be a new version of that coming out shortly. Uh, of course, all the all the release candidates will be refreshed shortly um, at, at at some rate uh, because um, we just promoted one of them. Um, but uh, the 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 re uh, they should all get updates pretty quickly. Um, and uh, that one will have some some actual substantive changes. Uh, it was reporting the version we had was reporting uh, 
way too many um, w seems to have reported lots more freezes than than other versions and of course we're not as as is always the case with these things we're not really sure whether they're really freezes or whether they're just a reporting problem um, I made some changes that were based on the hypothesis that they were actually a reporting problem so uh, we'll see whether that proves to be true. I simplified some of the code for detecting freezes. So um, the next version will tell us whether that's true or not. But uh, we're, we're doing that. There, there's probably going to continue to be um, work on the brake pad and crash uploading stuff for some time. Yeah, I, I really look forward to um, seeing the brake pad stuff. It uh, would definitely make my life easier. Yeah, one of the things we definitely have in the pipeline um, th that we've talked about doing but we haven't done yet is to make the uh, target of the of the of the crash dump upload a you know a setting, um, which will make it easier for those of you who want to do all this to uh, for yourselves to um, to tweak that. Um, so that's well, to, uh, to be frank. It, it's just a one-liner in in the source. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, but it's it, it is it is different, and we're probably going to change where we're targeting um, our uploads to go. So rather than uploading them back to the thing you're connected to now, we'll probably end up standing up a dedicated service for it. So um, we would just want to make it easier for ourselves to change it, really. Um, oh, okay. But uh, there, there may be other, there may be other changes. We're we're taking a good hard look at at that, um, so that we can try to have a, kind of an ongoing program of improving um, the fidelity and usefulness of our of our crash reporting. So. Um, Ex expect to see changes in that area of the code for quite some time, I think. Cool. Hopefully improvements, but certainly changes. Okay, I think we're I think we're done. Well, thanks for coming uh, off. Thirty four eighty seven. That sounds familiar. Yes. Yes, somebody is working on that. But I don't set uh I do not see that it is yet in any of the public branches.
thank you, Oz. Thank you all, actually. Um. Yeah, actually, you know, speaking of, somebody could perhaps update the uh, minimum requirements on the site to not include stuff like the Intel and so on. And I will catch you all later. Have fun.